Welcome back for another video here on my Fake Slow Journalism YouTube channel and for my review of Cadbury World that is going to see us returning to the accessible tourism reviews that I do on this channel. In this video you're going to see me giving my entire thoughts on whether Cadbury World is a really accessible place to go to and what they could be doing better. But before I get too far into this, please consider liking, subscribing and commenting under this video because it would be absolutely brilliant to get your thoughts on everything that I've been uploading. On this channel, I basically cover film, TV, concert and conference reviews as well as politics, as well as breaking news, including breaking technology news, and also accessible tourism, which is what we are getting into today. So if you like what you're seeing, please like, comment and subscribe, and let's now get into the video. <laughs> But just before I touch on the main review covered in this video, I would just like to ask you a couple of questions. Have you always wanted to have your own podcast? Do you have something to say that you believe the world needs to hear? Do you have what it takes to be listed on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and more? And are you passionate to do it this year, even in a way that will not break the bank and that will still allow you to be successful during the cost of living crisis? Well, if you've answered yes to all of these questions, then Red Circle is the correct podcast host for you. Red Circle gives you all the tools you will need to start your own podcast and will have you distributed, growing your audience and making money within weeks. You will receive advertising, can set up listener donations or sell subscriptions for exclusive content. But the good news is with Red Circle is that whatever you decide to do, it is entirely up to you. With the ability to customise and control your content even after it's been uploaded you can choose what order of your content will appear in your show whether that is through ads cross promotions with intros or with updates but best of all the best thing about red circle is that you can get access to all of this for free with no set time limit on how long you stay committed to the free plan. So if Red Circle sounds like a platform you would be interested in growing your podcast with, 
don't hesitate to click on the link on screen now and also in the description of this video which is https redcircleinc.grsm.io slash z 8 b 5 sa 9 n a e and sign up with that link. That is https redcircleinc.grsm.io slash z eight b five o eight s a nine n a e and I wish you all the best with podcasting after you sign up. But now let's get straight into the review. So Cadbury World is a tourist attraction in Burnville, Birmingham that was created by the Cadbury Company and which was opened in August 1990. Some of the attractions that Cadbury World includes are the 4D Chocolate Adventure, Manufacturing Exhibits and Props, the Gilcox Collection, the Making Chocolate Story, the Cadbury Ride, Purple Planet, Bull Street, Hashtag Jungle, the Cadbury Story, Chocolate Making, Advertising Avenue, Have a Go, The Burnville Experience, Journey to Europe, The Cadbury Cafe, The Cadbury Shop, The African Adventure Play Area, and they even have a green screen for you to get cool chocolatey pictures with family and friends there as well. I got to go to quite a number of these experiences on the day that I was there and I will be reviewing how accessible and fun each of them were but I will also be rewarding one extra point to my final opinion of it as the left to take me to the second part of the final exhibition we went to on the day was broken so I fully taken that into consideration. The first thing we did after checking in at the reception was heading over to the theatre that hosts the 4D chocolate adventure which does have two wheelchair places. We were given some glasses to help with the experience, obviously pretty, but while my family and friends found it brilliant because their seats were moving, I found that I didn't get as great of an experience with any of it as they did because the wheelchair spaces were only spaces for your wheelchair to go in but didn't have anything that would make it an equivalent for someone who was there in a wheelchair and because of this while everyone who was with me found the experience fun I find it slightly immature and boring. I understand why it's a safe choice for wheelchair spaces not to have any motion controls or sensors because some wheelchair dependent people also have other 
mental and learning disabilities as well. However, what I think people need to understand is there are also other disabled people like myself who love having fun but are paralysed and want to experience everything their non-disabled counterparts are experiencing. So what I would love for Cadbury World to add on to the 4D chocolate experiences and the other theatre based attractions that they do have would be to add in motion controls under one of the wheelchair spaces so that one wheelchair space has it and the other doesn't so that we can differentiate between if someone has any other conditions or is a baby and wouldn't like that as well as for the person who is just in a wheelchair but wants to experience the entire experience in the same way as the able-bodied mates are. But moving on, it was interesting as we went out seeing frames with the animated characters that we've all grown to love over the years. And I also liked the machine which had an augmented reality version of a chocolate being formed depending on what you tapped on the machine at that time. The next place we went was to the burn feel experience and it was very interesting learning about how Cadbury got started. After that we went to the Cadbury shop and it was a bit overwhelming seeing how much chocolate was in one place. As one of the main chocolate lovers in my family, come on, every house has one. I managed to escape with just a chocolate shoe and a chocolate teapot, which were both eaten in good time, but yeah, it was very hard not to pick up more than what I did in the end. The last place we went was on the Aztec Jungle and Cadbury story, which had screens all around the place. Some which tested the knowledge you already had about chocolate making, and others which had things explaining to you more about chocolate production in general. There was also another show about the beginnings of Cadbury on how they got started and about some of their relationships with partners throughout the years. But like was the case with the four day chocolate experience, there were sensors involved with this tour as well, which had chairs shaking. Luckily my friend, knowing how I felt about the chocolate experience, took my chair when her own seat was shaking, so I would be able to experience what everyone else was experiencing enough. But like what I said about the 4D chocolate experience, it really would be nice if there were sensors in wheelchair spaces that offered you this, even if it included built-in a wheelchair down as well. As I've mentioned already, the lift that was meant to take me to the next part of the tour was broken on the day, 
so I didn't actually say the end of that uh, in particular, but on my way out, I did get to see the famous thriller from the popular advert featuring in the air tonight by Phil Collins, which some would say is arguably better, so everything was fine. And I did also get a free chocolate in the end, but look what you get with the disability card. The full list of accessibility features available at Cadbury Road or low level service desks, changing places, facilities which are available on every floor, British Sign Language, access assistance in large print, and French assistance for visitors with compatible hearing aids, visually impaired large print scripts, lifts and elevators, depending on what you call it, although technically they could break. Tactile surfaces, CDA complaint handrails, stairs with colored warning edges, directional signage, hand ramp adaptions. Assistance dogs are also allowed the oyster attraction other than in production areas and they also have a sitting service for any assistant dogs who are in the building. So overall I'm definitely happy that I got to visit Cadbury Road and it is good that there's changing places on all levels and that they have a lot of accessibility options to keep people happy. But even then, there are still some disappointments. I've said already in other parts of this video how it is good that there are two wheelchair spaces in the theatre locations within Cadbury Road. And I've also explained how I understand how at least one wheelchair space does have to exist without any motion sensors involved. But really, I do still feel like I was still slightly robbed of an experience that everyone else was allowed to enjoy. But hopefully by taking on a couple of my suggestions, Cadbury Road, if you're watching this, can actually add a couple of what I have suggested in. It would be good to have motions under one wheelchair space at least even if that meant that added straps would have to be added to hold the wheelchair down. It was also interesting finding out everything that made Cadbury the company that it is today. However, and for this reason, I will wait Cadbury Road four stars. So I hope you have enjoyed this review, if you've enjoyed watching until the end and yeah make sure to like, comment and subscribe if you do. I will be back on Friday for another Routerism review. This one of mark in Birmingham and after that next week we will be taking a turn and concentrating on a wee bit 
of the Northern Ireland tourism. Hope you enjoy everything anyway. And this is Steve Snow. Good.